Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and I'm coming to you from behind the camera today at Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and I wanted to show you some of the flowering trees that we have on the property. If we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So these flowering trees are called ornamental pears and they don't actually give me uh, fruit, like they don't give me pears, you know, to eat, uh, but they're a beautiful, beautiful, white, fluffy uh, flowering tree in spring. Right now it's April here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And what happens is then they turn into like a, like a beautiful green, like there's just gorgeous green leaves on them. But if you're looking for landscaping ideas, uh, I would highly recommend them. They're super beautiful, but I do want to show you one thing that you need to watch out for. We lost a huge chunk of this tree because we didn't prune it back. We hadn't pruned it back uh, in a number of years. And what happens is the branches get um, a little bit overgrown, they get super heavy. And then when you get like a heavy snow or a heavy rain and wind, it will uh, it may crack some of the branches. Now I've had these trees in place here for probably about 10, 15 years. And you know, we've never really had a huge issue with, the, with them cracking like, like this guy did, but it would have been wise to have pruned them back like every few years. So we didn't, you know, like we hardly ever pruned ours back. The only thing we would do is kind of prune off the bottoms of them a bit because uh, they were getting like a little bit branchy on the bottom, but we never did like a really super great pruning. So if you do have ornamental pears and you wind up putting them on your property, just know that you should come in every now and then. And what you should do is just kind of thin out the tops make sure that they're not so heavy. You can either do it yourself or, you know, have like a garden company come in, but you can easily just come in here. And the trick is to kind of cut off any branches that are crisscrossing. Like you can tell these guys are crisscrossing here. So this guy's here, this guy's here. What you would do is you would just kind of take off this branch here because as these branches crisscross, they rub against each other and they one of them will make the other one weaker or they'll both get weak and then they can get diseased and they'll wind up, you know, just making a mess. So you want to take off any kind of crisscross branches and you also want to take off any branches that are diseased or dead or damaged. So it's like those three Ds. So you always want to remove the diseased, dead or damaged branches. So I want to show you another beautiful tree that we have. I'm going to walk you right down uh, Cranberry Fields Road here, like our little driveway. I'm trying not to give you guys vertigo, so I'm going to walk a little bit slow. And in back of these ornamental pears, I have a beautiful weeping cherry. Now, if you have a spot that's large and can handle a tree this size, you might want to check it out because this tree brings me so much joy. I actually have a, um, a video of this tree in the rain swaying. It's on Pinterest and it's gotten like... I don't know, like a crazy amount of views. And basically the video is just like watching this tree sway in the wind. And I think, you know, like you just get mesmerized by it. So it's a beautiful, beautiful tree, super easy to maintain. It's called the weeping cherry. And it turns these beautiful shades of pink in spring. And then it turns into like, just like beautiful green leaves. And I'm gonna give you a close up of what the flowers look like because the flowers actually look almost like carnations. Aren't they spectacular? So a lot of times I'll bring branches of this weeping cherry in the house when it's just in like this stage, like it's even like when it's not quite so um, pink, like it'll just be in like that little green stage and the buds are still tight and I'll bring them in. Like I brought a whole bunch of these branches in just a few weeks ago and it was still cold outside and I put the branches in a vase of water and after a few days, they burst open and I had all these beautiful branches of, you know, like these pink carnation-like flowers all over my house. And you can do that with the ornamental pears too. I did that with some of the ornamental pear branches. And it's just like a really beautiful look for your house to have these gorgeous branches with these beautiful flowers on them and like giant vases all around your house. And listen, it's a super cheap way to put gorgeous flowers all around your house. Oh, and look who's coming out to see what's going on here. You see Lucy? I was curious where she was. She's making her way over. So here she comes. 
But anyway, back to these flowering trees. So guys, these are a great addition to like your garden. If you have a, a, like a large enough space to put like one or two of these as anchors in your backyard landscaping, uh, that's pretty awesome. And also this weeping cherry, but they do take up a lot of space. So those are just two other ideas I wanted to share with you. And I hope you guys have a great day. And please come say hi to us over on uh, the Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. I encourage you guys to put pictures of your own flowers in your own gardens there. And please ask garden questions on that Facebook group. And what happens is the other Flower Tribe members are answering uh, each other's questions. I try to get over there at least two times a week. And I try to answer as many questions as I can to help you guys guys grow more beautiful flowers in your garden. Uh, but uh, the Flower Tribe members are really tackling a lot of those questions themselves, which I love. You guys are a terrific flower family, so thank you for that. Please let me know where you're from, from this great big beautiful world. I love to see how the Flower Tribe is growing around the globe each week. Come say hi to us over on our Cranberry Fields Instagram channel. I like to give a lot of free giveaways there. Uh, we have a lot of sunflower seeds uh, that we harvested from last year, and I've been doing a lot of fun uh, sunflower seed giveaways on our Instagram. Instagram. So check that out and I will see you guys in the next video. Say goodbye Lucy. <laughs> goodbye.